Hello everyone, this is Saman Saleem at SS Medics and as I had said that I will try to make another video about the common AMC clinical scenarios that come about the fluid balance. So here it is, let's start. A common scenario is that you are the resident on call in a suburban hospital. The charge nurse of the surgical ward calls you at 10 p.m. requesting that you write up some fluids for a patient Mr. Jones who is 52 years old and he has undergone a laparotomy earlier in the afternoon because of a perforated gastric ulcer which had been oversewn. Patient has a nasogastric tube and an IV line in place but there is no indwelling catheter. Operative findings are anterior wall duodenal ulcer which has been oversewn with no complications. Nursing staff is concerned as the patient has not passed urine since the procedure. Prior to surgery, patient was in good health up to presentation. Respiratory rate and temperature is in the normal range since admission and surgery 6 hours ago. Nasogastric drainage output is 600 ml since surgery corresponding with the volume in the bag which has not been emptied since surgery. Intravenous fluid intake since the admission has been 500 ml isotonic saline started during the operation and subsequently just finished. Intravenous orders as currently written are 500 ml of 5% dextrose over the 12 hours, then 500 ml of 5% dextrose over 12 hours and then review. Your tasks are to assess the patient and write your orders for drugs, fluids and any other further or orders with rationale. So now the first task which is the assessment of the patient. So let's start what is our patient and what are the important key things that we have to keep in mind before we start. Number one, our patient is 52 years old, Mr. Jones. Number two, he had presented with perforated gastric ulcer. So most probably this is not an elective surgery, it is, it seems like it was an emergency procedure, emergency laparotomy has been performed. And since this was an emergency procedure, the NPO duration of this patient may be very less like maybe uh, 6 hours as soon as he came into the emergency, some preparative materials and investigations must have done. And as soon as he was ready for the surgery, that would have been performed. So the NPO duration we are estimating as this was an emergency surgery would be less in this case. Now secondly, operative findings only the anterior wall duodenal ulcer etc is set but no comments about the estimated blood loss during the operation or if there was any fluids etc. Nothing has been told. Then on in the ongoing losses, it says that the NG drainage is 600 ml and if there have been any drains, if it was in lep a laparotomy, there must be some drains as well. No comment about the drains is here. Now the respiratory rate and temperature is in the normal range, which means that there are no additional demands of the fluids. And total IV fluids which have been given is only 500 ml of isotonic saline, which is clearly less than even the ongoing losses. Even if we presume that there was no fluid deficit, patient was not made NPO for a significant duration, even then the fluid that has been given to this patient is less. The problem at hand is that the patient has not passed urine since the procedure and that is our main task for which we have to assess. But when you read the task that your tasks are to assess the patient, it does not say that assess the patient for why he has not passed the urine. It simply says assess the patient. So now we are going to assess a post-surgical patient. Our main, con main concern will be that why this patient has not passed urine, but we have to keep in mind the other aspects of a surgical patient as well. So let's start. In history, we will ask the patient some questions uh, about the fluid deficit. If there are any operation notes, we will see if there is any estimated blood loss during the surgery, if any blood products were infused during the surgery, 
were there any drains or nasogastric tube which were emptied in the operation um, uh, operation theater and if the patient had any nausea or vomiting before or after the surgery so these are the questions that we are asking to estimate the fluid deficit now we can also ask like how uh, for how long the patient was made npo before uh, his surgery was performed then a very important aspect here is if the patient has any history of medications renal disease and cardiac disease because the patient's age is 52 years old which is very likely that he might be having some of this problem and if there is some of these issues we have to be very cautious while we are giving the fluids then we have to assess the patient ask some questions if the patient is towards fluid dehydration or fluid overload so for dehydration we will ask if the patient is thirsty or not if he is feeling very irritable or drowsy or lethargic if the patient has any urge to pass the urine if there is any discomfort in the lower tummy or not for fluid overload we can simply ask if there has been any swelling of the legs or if the patient is having any shortness of breath then as we are not simply assessing the fluid status but patient as a whole so we have to have uh, we have to ask about the anesthesia complications if the patient is in pain right now if the patient would like to have some pain relief when was the last pain relief given uh if the antibiotics cover has been given or not if the patient has any other concern if the patient has any pain besides at the operator site so this is a focused assessment questions that we will ask during our history next is the assessment that we will do via our examination so in our examination the signs of dehydration are very important which are dry mucosal membrane sunken eyes loss of the skin turgor and delayed capillary refill time then signs of the poor perfusion which basically mean that if the patient is having moderate to severe dehydration or if the fluid deficit is significant such that the patient's peripheries are not being well perfused he will be having cold clammy peripheries tachycardia with weak feeble pulse and hypotension so all of these things they tell you that the patient is in hypovolemic shock then respiratory rate and temperature we have to see if there is any increased fluid demands but this has already this information has already been given in the scenario we have also uh, we have to check the signs of fluid overload by checking jvp uh, if there are any, any coarse crackles if there are any signs of pleural effusion or ascites or pitting edema so what most of the students do that they do mention that they will check for the signs of dehydration but they forget that they also have to check the for the signs of fluid overload then uh, we have to assess the bladder condition if the bladder is palpable and enlarged and if the patient has any urge to pass the urine if bladder is pressed and again we have to keep the patient as a whole in mind so we will address the wound site the operative site as well if the dressing is soaked we will change that and we will also check for the signs of dvt in this patient next is our clinical impression after our assessment as for the clinical impression no maintenance fluids are being given to this patient this patient has undergone a laparotomy which means that the patient is npo even if the pre operative npo was not significant he, now after the operation he has to be npo and the maintenance fluids should be started to this patient but we have seen that only 500 ml of isotonic saline was infused at the start of the surgery and only that 500 ml has now finished that's it there are no maintenance fluids which are being given and besides that 500 ml the patient has already lost 600 ml in his nasogastric tube just after the surgery so the ongoing losses they are not being addressed appropriately if there are any drains present or not and if there is any fluid in that as well then some fluid must be lost during the surgery there must be some estimated blood loss during the surgery even if there were no complications and that should be replaced as well so right now we do think that 600 ml have already lost just in the nasogastric tube and patient has only been given 500 ml which does not encompass not only the ongoing losses 
no maintenance fluids and f there must be some fluid deficit as the fluids or blood will be lost would have been lost during his surgery so we our clinical impression is that patient is basically in hypovolemia patient is having some moderate to severe dehydration which has caused renal hypoperfusion and now ultimately this patient is having oliguria or anuria as in this case so patient is not able to pass the urine at all now next was how what are your orders so orders will be that you would advise continuous vitals monitoring of this patient input and output charting and for output charting of course you have to pass the catheter to monitor the urine output then you will give the fluid bolus of 500 ml isotonic saline within 30 minutes so within next 30 minutes you will give him 500 ml isotonic saline and then you will review the patient after this fluid bolus if the patient has passed any urine or not and if there some urine has been passed you will collect that sample and you will send it for urine osmolality and urine sodium concentration and also you will uh, check the serum electrolytes and serum urea and creatinine and this is basically we are doing to differentiate whether oliguria is because of pre renal causes or there has been some intrinsic renal damage so how do we differentiate between these two it is very simple uh if the if the patient has pre renal oliguria which means that the kidneys are absolutely intact it is because circulatory fluid is insufficient and the kidneys are trying their best to minimize any fluid or solutes loss in the urine so when we will check the urine sodium concentration in the urine will be very low which will be less than 20 mmol per liter urine osmolality will be very high and urine creatinine will also be very high which means that a very concentrated urine which is full of wastes is being produced by conserving maximum water and maximum solute which is sodium whereas on the other hand if the kidneys have been damaged kidneys are not working properly it is renal oliguria because of some intrinsic damage to the kidneys now the kidney would be wasting the fluid and the uh, important solutes like sodium and waste will not be present as much so urine sodium will be high urine osmolality will be low and urine creatinine will be low because the damaged kidney is simply flushing out the water and solutes with no waste in it so that is why we have sent those investigations so we can easily differentiate whether it was pre renal or renal oliguria so this was a clinical scenario that has repeatedly come uh, in the mmc clinical and let's i just hope that i have cleared most of the queries regarding that scenario